Hey everyone, welcome back to the grind. We have we're done. We're done with the book of Philemon. And so thank you, Sam, for sharing. We're gonna be talking about like his message and what it looks like to embrace spiritual equality and acceptance, which is something that Philemon was encouraged to do when it came to Onesimus, because Onesimus was once a runaway slave and now he's been asked to accept him back as a fellow brother in Christ. So yeah, basically treat him more than just a servant. And I know that like something that, you know, that a lot of people are talking about these days is like, you know, equality, like diversity, equity and inclusion, D the whole DEI thing. I was just thinking about like, you know, something that's relevant to, I guess, to to this day and age. Uh, and yeah, because that's what I was thinking about when I was just reading like Philemon and just the whole like, you know, bring him back, equal standing, so on and so forth. Right. And I know like DEI is something that workplaces are uh, striving to achieve. But what do you think it looks like in our church? For example, like, what do you think diversity should look like? Having young and old people on the worship team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is in regards to a recent article, a recent article that we are here. Yeah. But yeah, what does the what do you think diversity looks like in a church? Um, married and singles, mm -hmm. and uh, rich and poor together. Mm. Uh, I I'm just reminded of the Bible story where they were like scolding the people, why why you treat the well dressed people so well and invite them to the good seat and then you leave the poor people mm. outside um, or something. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. For me, um, since I grew up in church, so I've seen a lot of diversity, especially here in ICA. I grew up here in ICA, so what I've seen, like growing up in church, I think different background, different mm -hmm. cultural background, different uh, ethnicity, and as well as like, yeah, age, um, mm -hmm. and like languages as well. Because mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, it's only like, not only, but like mainly Cantonese, right? Like mm -hmm. Chinese. Yeah. But then like, here in ICA, I see that there are like Filipino like me. Yeah. Um, what else? It's like the subcongregation that we have. Yeah. Like, um, Sri Lanka, Nepali. So yeah. growing up, you know, here in church, like I've seen a lot of diversity and people really are well connected, even mm. though different. Different um, backgrounds. Yeah, different backgrounds. But how is it like at, at school for you? For school, <laughs> for school is quite different. Cause like in high school, I went to semi-international not really it's just like it kind of turned international when when i'm there because mm -hmm. a lot of non-chinese non speaking students are like coming into in our school mm -hmm. but then this they, they separated like the the chinese and the non the ncs uh class what's not, ncs non-chinese mm. oh, okay yeah so they separated okay. them because like one we don't know Chinese. Uh -huh. Majority of them don't know Chinese, and then like the local people, local student, they they know Chinese, so mm -hmm. they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. So in a way, diversity, it's it's good, but then we don't really interact with the local student. Oh. That's like me growing up in, I mean, me in high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I'm similar. Grew up in ICA, went to international school. So I think for me, diversity is is. Is like the, what I'm used to, mm. right? So yeah, I think it's you know for me diversity looks like yeah different backgrounds, different culture, different life stages, and so on. Uh, interestingly, I was just thinking about it is that even though like maybe I grew up in such a diverse background, but maybe like my own friend group may not be super diverse. Like, mm. have you ever looked at your own like friend group comedians? Yeah. Like, like how diverse is it? <laughs> it's not really diverse for me. I feel like I still hang out with like my kind like yeah. Filipinos yeah I mean I guess it's because like I can't really relate to other people mm -hmm. who are who are not because different people have different cultural background mm -hmm. but then once you click with like the mm -hmm. same nationality it's like mm -hmm. yeah yeah what were you like not diverse at all <laughs> but, but then I, I, I think why, why do I need to be diverse yeah right it's like mm. That's, yeah, that's true. Do Why? I have, a, have to have a quota for every friend? Yeah, you need oh, yeah. to be gay, you, you need to be a lesbian, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to be black here, and then yeah. disabled here. <laughs> disabled. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> yeah. So, th yeah, that's true. Like, what does your friend group need to be diverse? That is yeah. a legitimate question, right? Does it show mm. that you're not, like, encompassing, you know, everyone if you're your friend group isn't diverse so yeah it is an interesting thought but i think like 
and also it doesn't say in the Bible like a church must be consisting of such and such and such thing. I think the, at the end of the day, like the church is supposedly a place where anyone、um, can come, regardless of like you know background, race, gender, like、um, you know upbringing, that you should be able to come in、um, safely. All right, so let's talk a little bit about、um, equity. So what does equity、um, look like? Within the church, same treatment for everyone.、Mm. So、yeah. there's always this perception that、um, those who tithe more,、uh-huh. you will、oh. you will treat them yeah, better, yeah. or those who are senior, you will give、yeah. them more、oh. uh, respect. Like I mean, there's one. The, the, if anything that the Bible specifically talks about is basically showing no partiality to、yeah. people,、mm. and. And like, and also going back to Philemon, right? It's like you know,、um, Onesimus coming back and being a fellow brother in Christ. It didn't say like, okay, he's now your servant again, treat him as so, but more like receive him back as a family of Christ. And I think also maybe like the whole showing like equity to people and people on equal standing. It's, I mean, the question is like, do you think everyone can be on equal standing?、Mm. No. Right. It's like, and you lead. You're in in the worship band. Yo, you play bass. You play、yeah. everything. You always lead. You're so good. Our church is so blessed to have you. And then you don't say these things、yeah. to a, a nobody sitting at the back. Yeah,、mm. I mean, not that they're nobody, but we just don't say it to, to yeah the person sitting in the back. Because I think people will treat someone who is on stage like yeah like oh yeah you are doing so well as、yeah. opposed to the person who doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean that's just I don't know the way <laughs> humans naturally interact, or like if you're holding a leadership position, you're bound to be seen as higher. Because、mm. people see them often on stage. I feel、yeah. like they don't really see people who are next to you. I mean, like I know pastors would be like, oh, just greet the people next to you like during sermons, but then. Will they remember them? Not really. Yeah. So unless you're saying that's like your husband or your wife, <laughs> then you better remember. But yeah, that's true. Yeah. So with showing equity to to one another, I think most importantly we need to remember that we're all adopted in、uh, the family of Christ,、mm-hmm. and that we're all brothers and sisters. And I think、um, there are obviously different leadership positions that you know one is going to be. I think when we talk about equal standing and showing equity, I think that means like just treating each other as brother of Christ,、yeah. extending the same love and mercy that you know Christ extended us to others. But in terms of like obviously there are different people in different leaderships like positions,、um, and one will be in a way higher,、mm. uh, so we'll have to submit to that authority as well. So I don't think like showing equity means like you know forgetting about about that like about submission to authority. And something that Pastor Red has mentioned in the past is that you know we're not servants of God, but we're servant、oh. to each other. Right, like we're serving each other. So I think that's something important to remember, and not be all like false humility and and everything. All right, and finally, let's talk a little bit about、um, inclusion, inclusion, because that's something that's huge、um, in the DEI context. So, like, what are your thoughts of this whole term and how it works in church? I think, like, in church, like, because everyone is so welcoming. Mm-hmm. In a way, like they they try to include everyone in,、mm-hmm. like even after church or、right? after service, there's gonna be like、um, uh, those what's that called the welcoming area? Yeah, yeah, the newcomers area. Yeah, newcomers area. So it's like, and not only that, they will give you the welcoming the welcome new pack. yeah welcome pack though. So it's like, in a way, in church,、um, yeah, they. They, I think inclusion is important in church,、mm-hmm. just to feel like oh you are, you're belonged here、mm-hmm. or like, you just be comfortable in church and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering what's the difference between diversity and inclusion. I think diversity is more of、um, here. This is a range of, of, you know, people that we have backgrounds and, and whatnot. Uh, I feel like inclusion speaks of like how much are they like part of the fold,、mm-hmm. um, because then the next question will be like, what do you think is the difference between inclusion and belonging? Because、mm. like I said, mentioned right, like 
the like inclusion is such a huge thing that's just hit there and i think if you look at different companies like there's like you have to accept all these different people like their backgrounds mm. and and everything like the whole like racial equality harmony um like religious harmony and and even like what sexual orientation um harmony right so in my head i think a church should be a safe place for everyone to come whether or not you're um yeah like background um you know sexual orientation uh political leanings uh, i think the church should be a safe place for all it should be non-judgmental a place for all because at the end of the day where the church is uh it's meant to be is for uh the, is for you to grow in your relationship with jesus mm. Uh, and then as you grow in your relationship with Jesus, then, you know, it affects, you know, the way you live your life, the, the choices that you make and so on. We're supposed to love people as Christ did. And for them to also recognize, you know, the error of sin, um, the gravity of sin and how the answer is Jesus. I mean, it's plain, simple. That's where, um, uh, like, that's basically where church is, uh, yeah. what we're supposed to learn from learning. We're coming together as, as a body of Christ. Now, inclusion um the way i see it is that i don't know if we should be including everyone and everything now i know that sounds a little bit bad mm -hmm. um like but for example if someone is clearly living in sin i mean i'm welcoming you to church yeah. you're mm -hmm. welcome to church we, we're gonna love you we're gonna walk with you um but if i but inclusion but it doesn't mean that i'm gonna put you on the pulpit to preach it doesn't mean that i'm going to use you in a position in a leadership position yeah. because oh, yeah. your choices are going to stumble yeah. people uh, yeah. and like what titus talked about you have to be blameless yeah when mm -hmm. you are full of blames then yeah. why why should we put you as an elder yeah so sometimes with the whole idea of inclusion in the like you know in the secular context it's like it doesn't matter whatever like you know mm. thing that you're doing like we will still have you do all the above blah 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 which doesn't aff i guess it doesn't affect like day-to-day -day, like work or whatever like you know like uh, sexual orientation you know gender whatever it doesn't affect like you know the day-to-day -day work i guess in an office but then like if we were to apply same concept in the church context i think it does affect because mm. if you're living in sin i can't have you you know lead people closer to christ it mm. just like blatantly living in sin mm. so that's what i would think i thought inclusion and belonging is um one is more passive mm -hmm. and the other one is more proactive so mm -hmm. you're included in our circle mm -hmm. you're, you're in the group but you're not really in the group yeah mm, <laughs> true yeah. and i guess if belong is just more like the the step that you take yeah, yeah. right yeah. to integrate yourself and to yeah be part i suppose yeah makes yeah. sense like one of the, our core values at, at ICA is belong right and the whole idea mm. is um we are rooted in covenant relationship like god invites us to enter into a covenant relationship with him and just as we've been adopted into god's family we bring family into all that we do so therefore we choose to build a covenant relationship with each other so the idea is that that at the end of the day we are uh, rooted in um covenant relationship we are like we are created for a relationship so how are we pursuing a relationship with each other and i think it's hard to establish a relationship if you think like one is better than the other like oh you're oh, yeah. a sinner i'm not going to be with you or i'm not going to walk with you or you're a pre-believer pre like you know you're i'm too good for you that kind of thing mm -hmm. right so we're meant to um walk together uh, with others so and i mean let's talk a little bit about you know like family for just a little bit i mean all of us here we have siblings um yes. yeah uh, and so have we seen our siblings as equals in our in our lives like have you guys had like sibling rivalry me growing up no <laughs> <laughs> i feel like because like i'm the youngest mm -hmm. and i have an older brother mm -hmm. for me the youngest well generally the youngest are always the pampered one mm -hmm. and always the one who's kind of spoiled and then the older <laughs> are like you know always like I always blame my brother like oh he did this and my parents would be like oh older brother blah 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 so yeah I grew up like that I'm quite pepper and spoiled mm -hmm. so in a way like how I uh, 
like how my parents treat us is a little bit different and do I think it's equal? Not really, but you know, I think the society kind of re- already labeled as youngest is like this and then the older siblings are also like this, right? Mm. So, um, but then like growing up, I feel like the more we grow, the more we see each other quite different now mm-hmm. and quite equal. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're like my brother mm-hmm. and like I respect you now. Not like before when we were younger, it's like different, but then now it's like, oh, I'm working, you're working, mm-hmm. I'm in school, you're working. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, in a way, uh, it shows more respect mm-hmm. and more like we kind of bond a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But before it's like more playful. Mm. Now it's like, like have a deeper connection with right. siblings. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm blessed to have equal treatment mm-hmm. from my parents for for me and my younger mm-hmm. brother. But I, I don't think I have seen him as equal. equal. <laughs> I always seen him as as someone annoying. <laughs> yes. And uh, I always have these thoughts. Why why is your room so? messy why mm. why can't you do this why can't you do that mm. why don't you fix it yourself mm-hmm. but uh in terms of rivalries i i guess we, we could say it's a bathroom rivalry true. so you occupied the, uh, yeah. the room oh, for half so an true. hour and right. uh, i guess because like also you and your brother are like similar age as well so yeah I think when we're all younger, um, I don't think we'll necessarily see our siblings as equals. Um, definitely not me, because my brother is like five years younger, so definitely did not seem as equal. Number one, not female and boy, so <laughs> definitely not equal. Uh, the treatment that we receive from our parents, I think parents try to be as equal as possible. Um, but obviously, sometimes you can feel like, oh, but then he gets all the cool toys and I don't. I and he'll be like, yeah, but you get all the attention because you're the older one. And, you know, there are these yeah. arguments and, and, wow. and everything. I mean, my brother and I have a similar birthday mm. uh, in the oh. sense we're both like, we're five years and five days apart. So growing up, we always had the same birthday party. And I was like, that's that's as equal as we're gonna <laughs> oh, no. get in life like the similar like in you know, a birthday party but yeah i think growing up maybe didn't see him as equal mm. uh, consciously but i think now that we're older now that we're um settled in our own like personalities our own like you know work and everything then i think yeah i mean we're never going to be on paper like completely equal mm. um but then i do see him as someone i mean i do respect him i do look up to him even though he's younger um and but yeah i think for me like we are on, on equal grounds even though on paper like i think we're just in you know different standings in life so yeah rivalry yeah that was rivalry but you know that's all in the past and like now like legitimately like um, yeah, and so I think we've definitely grown in our own ways, um, and we also have grown together, uh, just from like just experiences that we have. So, like for you guys, how have you grown together with your own siblings? We used to take lessons together. Mm. Uh, I think it's easier for my parents to manage. <laughs> so when when we did swimming lessons, uh, my brother came along. When I did mm. violin lessons, he came along. When I did mm. like martial arts lessons, he came along. Mm. And uh, when I started playing this game called Marble Blast, he started no. to learn it. Oh. And then and then we would play um, strategy games together, like Empire Earth, uh-huh. uh, Command and Conquer Generals. But then our interests grew very, very different. Mm. And I would continue music, and he would just. Mm. Mm dive into this mess mm. yeah for me like growing up we both love video games <laughs> he introduced me to league of legends all of those guy games so i was like growing up i was kind of like a small little gamer <laughs> small little gamer kid <laughs> like a girl small little gamer playing league of legends like ah so um we bonded through video games mm. a lot um but then obviously growing up I had to focus on my studies, stop the video games because mm-hmm. of Wi-Fi issue, but it's fine. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> so, your dad just like you know, unplugs the yeah, Wi-Fi from like, the wall. Uh, slow Wi-Fi, never mind, no more. So, um, but now I think we're we don't really see each other much because one, he's busy, and I'm also busy. We're kind of having our lives just going mm-hmm. on, but um, I think when. We, we meet each other like 
uh, once in a while, mm -hmm. and then and in that meet we would like talk and talk and talk. It's not like before, right? We bond mm -hmm. like through video games, but now it's like more of mm -hmm. life. Like, oh, what's going on with your life? Blah blah blah. Which is, which is so refreshing, right? It's mm -hmm. your sibling, and it's like, it's like it's you're seeing the other side of him. Because mm -hmm. like growing up, it's like oh, I was, like you're so annoying, you know. Like mm -hmm. now it's like oh, it's like it's relaxing and it's so refreshing to hear what's going on in your life. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think like like biological family provides like a different aspect in in growing and to get in like I guess forming your personality. But what's also just as important um, is also your spiritual family too. Mm -hmm. So do you have spiritual family that you intentionally um, grow together? Like how's it been in your life to have spiritual family? I I just stay committed to my fellowship group. So mm -hmm. um, in my in my home church. There's this young adult group that we uh, meet every Saturday night, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, initially I, I didn't really belong, mm -hmm. as we mentioned before. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was there, but then because the group have known each other for many years mm -hmm. since um, prim primary, secondary school, mm -hmm. high school, and so I, I was a new kid relatively, and I was just there, mm. <laughs> and. Uh, but then I intentionally stayed. Um, I stayed committed, and then I think we have grown together, and mm. the experiences um, have made us closer. Mm. And I, I think it's very funny now that I, I think they know me better than myself. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. they they would make comments like, "Oh, you you don't like people helping negatively." Mm. And uh, oh, you don't like stupid people. Mm. <laughs> it was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, for me, it's like my friend group because we kind of grew. We went to the same high school, also to the same church. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're all Christians. Mm -hmm. So, um, we kind of grow spiritually together. Mm -hmm. And we used to like go to Taiwan a lot. Mm -hmm. Like every Saturday, we would do worship and that's how we all started worship mm -hmm. it's because of Taiwan mm -hmm. so um, we started worshiping there and then um, yeah once in a while we would talk about like oh how's your faith how's mm -hmm. everything like spiritually and we would talk it out and it, it, again it's refreshing to talk yeah, it out yeah. like and um, to let out like what you've been going through uh, mm -hmm. in your spiritual journey mm -hmm. and then at the end like we would pray for each other which is uh, a wonderful thing a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, spiritual family yeah um, I mean in different like seasons of my life of different communities it has impacted my faith you know whether it be like in in college uni where it's you know discovering who Jesus is for ourselves you know in that community to do it together with or in the season it's like um, going through life together and yet yeah, friends from like with different life stage at different life stages but then also at the end of the day it's like our faith drawing us together and sometimes we're like yeah just meet up chat sometimes there's like you know a book study that we do together to kind of intentionally grow and, and discuss like you know deeper questions and I think like having these people in my life have definitely um, brought an insight uh, to the way I see things maybe mm -hmm. it's like hey pet like you're being a little bit negative here or hey pet yeah. actually have you thought about this or what like or even like friends to who coach me who try to push me to be better and go further so I think it, that has definitely um, also encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone and also mm -hmm. in a way like not be lazy <laughs> uh, and do things like oh yeah I could be a little bit more you know this um, yes thank you thank you for sharing <laughs> that kind of deal so all right so I think we spend a lot of this, you know, talk, um, yeah, this time just talking about, yeah, diversity and what it looks like to show equity and, and you know, belonging. I think it's not, I think the key thing to focus on is not necessarily including, but, you know, belonging, the whole idea of what does it look like to belong to the family of Christ. So um, I think it's also important to show um, equality and acceptance to pre-believers as well. Something that's mentioned is like not to have a us versus them mm. mentality. So have you faced challenges in this situation? I would say yes and no. All right. Tell <laughs> um, us a little bit more. The no is uh, sure, I, I try to treat everyone the same uh, regardless of their faith. Mm -hmm. um, but then yes, because I find it very difficult to uh, 
love others as myself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially when they believe or they say something I I don't agree with. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. Mm. For me, one thing I could think of is alpha, because yeah. um, last year I went alpha. So alpha basically it's like with non-believers, mm-hmm. pre-believers, mm-hmm. and believers. Mm-hmm. So. Through my experience of Alpha and in the group that I had, it was quite challenging in a way, especially with non-believers and pre-believers, because they have comments and questions that I can't really answer mm. in a way. So, like, cause cause for me it's more on experiences and how I feel, mm-hmm. right? So, but then I can't really describe it how to them, like how I felt, like the presence of God, and like how I encountered. God, you know, mm-hmm. so it's it's quite hard because for them it's very like they want it with answers, with right. like they have like a rational mind. So yeah. Um, yeah, for me it's quite challenging. Right. Well, I think for me it's easy. It's hmm, I wouldn't say easy. I think definitely see them on equal, equal standing. That's yeah. gonna be a challenge because like yeah, I mean I know who God is. You don't know who God is. Like so mm. therefore, uh, <laughs> and yes, yes, I admit there've been times where I can think like. Oh, I am better because I know the way, the truth, mm-hmm. and the life. Yeah. But then I should never use that and rub it in people's face and be like, "Oh, no, better than you." Because I've definitely mm-hmm. been in situations, and I've shared this before, where I will tell someone, like you know, when I was younger, that my God is better than your God, which is true. But then it really shows that I'm lifting myself higher than the person. Mm-hmm. I think when any time when you lift yourself higher than the person, they're not going to want to hear from you. Especially we do it in a very arrogant way, and I kid yeah. you not, I was pretty arrogant about saying that my God was better than other gods. Um, so I think arrogance is never the way to reach out to people. Uh, and yes, acceptance—that's that's a hard thing because yes, I can accept you as a person, but I don't know if I can accept what you're doing and mm. be okay with it. But then obviously, if you show that to someone who's a pre-believer, it's like, oh, I, I accept you, but I don't accept what you're doing. They can also be very turned off because it's like then you're not accepting me. Mm. What's yeah. the difference? Yeah, um, you're telling me that I am welcome at your church, but you're not okay with what I do. Yeah. So, so there is that you know very like hard balance for people to say like, how are you including me or accepting me when you don't accept what I do? Mm. Right. So, I think it's how do we um, show love. Uh, to people who may not necessarily understand why we reject why they what they do, I think that's always going to be a, a constant challenge. Especially mm. if they don't understand the whole idea of who God is, yeah. as well. So hence the whole that's why Christians are seen as judgmental people and yeah. oppressive, oppressive <laughs> hypocrites, yeah. etc. All the above, and so it is not easy to be Christian. Yeah, but then I heard this saying. Um, You can be born as whatever, mm-hmm. but everyone in Christ is born again. Um, so it doesn't matter where you came from. Yeah. But you have to go to a new place together. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Christ. Yeah. Mm. So I think there's always a second chance with Christ. There's always a new beginning with Christ, and I think everyone should know that. Mm. Um, I think it's also like how do we um, walk with the person? How do we, you know, show them the love of Christ without having them feel condemned? Because I think that's it's. I think the way people are wired is like when you tell them like, oh, you need to turn back to, to Jesus. Like, but what are you talking about? How am I sinning? What does this even mean? I mean, mm. so I don't know. Now we got to be creative to tell people like, hey, you're living in sin, but not in a way where it's like, uh, I don't know. People are a little bit soft these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so it's, um, but then also again, I wouldn't appreciate someone t- like if I was a non-believer, I wouldn't appreciate someone's like, hey, you're sinning. Come to Jesus. I mean, mm. how's that like showing? Yeah. It's it's the truth, but it's not. A tr- it's not something that will stick in my mind. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. What I, do you think? I, I mean, I think we need more hardness, as you say. Uh, yeah, I think people uh, are a little bit soft. soft. Yeah, this so- soft parenting is also being questioned. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I hear you. It's, yeah. Again, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just different people, right? Uh, I'm just trying to think, like you know, going to a non-believer, but hey, you're sinning. You need Jesus. How would they take that? Like, is that hard? Mm. Is that is that is that is that hard? That's needed, or is it is it loving? Oh, mm. Try all and see what sticks. <laughs> 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 I mean, at the end of the day, uh, 
we are to imitate Christ by spending time with his people and being a light in our community, not just like within the church, but also I think in our general life. Like you don't want to act one way at church and be another way somewhere else. So then, like I said, um, not easy being a Christian, but you know, we're empowered by the spirit to, to live a life for him. So continue to tap in that. Cool. Well, that's that for today. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye.